to my channel and if you're new, welcome. Today's video is a really personal video that I didn't think that I would share, but I was like, maybe this video will help a lot of people. Because when I was younger and I tried searching up this topic on YouTube to try to get some like information, and I tried seeing if I could do anything to reduce these keloids, there was nothing. There was like only one video where this girl was sharing all the stuff that I'm now looking back at as very incorrect. So I decided to make this video to share my experience, what I've been doing and what, what I'm currently experiencing, what I'm doing and what other people can do as well. Yeah, I really want to do this video to help other people who have keloids as well, especially on the earlobe. This video I'm going to show you all the things that they use in my ears. I was recording when I was at my appointment and where I go, how it looks where I go. I'm going to share what keloids are, what you all can do to reduce them, how I got them. I'm going to share everything here in this video. I'm going insert some videos and like pictures I know for a fact I'm going to cringe editing this video because I don't like looking at them like I really don't like it's something that definitely people need to talk about to help other people who don't know what to do especially when I was younger when I was 13 14 and searched up on YouTube trying to get help and there's no one who had a video to help me and I was just like why 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 I just get super angry and upset with myself when I do look at them but anyways if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe because I do a lot more videos similar to this Oh, just thinking about them makes me cringe, but I'm going to help all of you. So if you're interested, stay tuned and let's begin. I'm aware this is a really sensitive and personal topic. Now for me, especially, it's a very sensitive topic in the sense that I get really sad about this. And like, if anyone points them out of my ear, I get really insecure. And if anyone even made fun of me because of these on my ears, I would get really insecure and really sad because I feel like keloids are very ugly. And that's why I'm so surprised I'm making this video because even talking about it right now, I'm just like, oh. But I'm really thankful at the size of the keloids that I received because some people's keloids get really big. Mine were an okay size that it was I can easily hide them with my hair and stuff. Okay, so what are keloids? I'm just sharing my knowledge from what I know since I'm 14 till I'm 21 because that's how long I've been experiencing keloids and my treatment process and all that. So it started when I was 14 and I'm now 21. So I feel like I have some knowledge to help other people who are experiencing this. I'm just gonna let everyone know keloids, you cannot die from them. They're not like deadly, they're not ill, they're not they're not detrimental to your health. The only concern with keloids is a cosmetic concern, okay? Because they're ugly. Like they the way the skin heals is so ugly. They're not pleasant to look at, let's be real. So that's why it's a problem for a lot of people, especially people who have it on their face or on their earlobes or somewhere visible it's just the way your skin heals as in a lot of people just don't want it on their skin they just don't like how it looks so people go through measures to have it removed reduced flattened and that's what I don't like about it it's just it's not pretty to look at I know in some cultures keloids and all that is like okay to have on the skin and they do it in a nice pretty way in their culture but the way it forms on my skin and how it looks is not my type okay this is in my own words summarized a very simple plan based so basically keloids are basically how your skin heals from an abrasion. I think that's the correct word, abrasion. So basically how your skin heals from a puncture to your skin, a scratch, a cut. What I mean by the way the skin heals, with some abrasions to the skin, so say if you get cut on your skin and usually the cut will heal and there will be a, a really flat scar or there won't be a scar at all with keloids, you will get a cut on your skin and the way that your skin heals is like 3d there's a scar on you and it's 3d so a higher level on your skin it's like a 3d scar so the scar doesn't heal flat and the same level as your skin it heals higher than your skin keloids can occur on anybody's skin any skin type it's just that it's really prominent with darker skin tones i forget what the correct name is for anybody who has keloid type of skin but it's just a type of skin that's more prone to having scars heal like this in a certain way. Even though I have this type of keloid pro prone skin, I noticed that my skin only heals in a keloid form when I don't clean the abrasion, so the cut. That's maybe a reason why a lot of people get keloids is because of how you clean your cut. For me, that's the reason and that's how I got the keloids that I have because I just didn't clean the cuts. I noticed the cuts that I got to my skin that I actually cleaned, they healed and they disappeared. There's no scar on my body or nothing. I got a cut on my eyebrow before. It was really deep. I had to get 
get stitches and they cleaned it. I took care of it and there's no keloid on my eyebrow. When I did get that, my eyebrows, I was crying for the longest time because I was like, I don't want my face to have a keloid on it. Like that is so very ugly. So thankfully, I noticed it was because of how I clean my skin. But that can be a way to prevent even getting. You can actually get keloids on any part of your body. I have my keloid on my ear. I have one at the side of my leg as well. It's kind of big, but I don't really care about it. It doesn't look bad or anything. My main concern are the keloids on my ear. And that's a general basic way of what keloids are. Now keloids, they can grow on your skin. That's another concern. They can grow. They can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Currently, they're really small right now. I'm gonna show you all. They're small on this side. There's one at the front that is small. I'm okay with these sizes because I could have had it worse. I could have it really big. In the past, when I was reducing my keloid, it came to a point where like it was really big. I'm gonna insert the clip here. And I'm gonna explain why it grew to that size later on in the video. But when I was growing on it, they were getting big. And I noticed that and I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't walk around with like these bumps on my ears. Like, Ugh! so I knew I had to go and take alternative measures. Now keloids, they get really itchy. You want to really reduce scratching the itch on these keloids because once you scratch the keloids, they will grow. That's a symptom of keloids. They're kind of hardish, they grow, and they're really itchy. Try not to scratch them to relieve the itch. But now, since I've been getting my treatments, I haven't itched my keloid in time. The keloid can be bigger than the abrasion that you have on your skin. So say if you have a little scratch in your skin, your keloid can grow like this big on your skin. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't understand. Stand, but that's just what it did. When my keloid came off and I looked inside of it, it looked like a muscle. It was like a white muscle. It was very firm and tough and it was a ball. Okay, so that's the symptoms of keloids. Now, causes. Now, you can get a keloid having just keloid prone skin, and due to that, when you get cuts, don't clean it properly, you can get a keloid. So, you can get keloid from any type of abrasion, as I was talking about. So, piercing. That's how I got my keloid. You can get it from any scratches to your skin, any cuts, burns, just any abrasion into your skin so anything that punctures your skin and just to let you all know again dealing with your keloids requires more than one appointment it's not a one-time thing and it's gone no it's gonna be something that you have to keep up with all the time maintain especially if you have keloids that grow back for treatments of keloids there is surgical removal and there's also steroid injections now but I've been doing steroid injections I didn't didn't do surgical removal I know someone and she had a keloid on her ear and she told me that how she went for a many appointments she had a keloid on her cartilage at the top of her ear and then so she went in for appointment series appointments and the doctor gave her steroid injection in the keloid when it came to a certain time the doctor formed a surgical removal of the keloid and the doctor did not cut off any other part of her ear or anything just where the keloid was located and she told me that they like burnt it a little bit some burnt method or something and the keloid never grew back for her like she doesn't have to deal with it ever again and I was like what that is so cool I really don't like these on my ears well at the back I don't mind the one that I have on the front over on this one you probably see this one a lot in my YouTube videos for surgical basically they remove surgically the keloid and it depends on how big your keloid is that you will qualify for surgical removal I thought about it but then I have a really good doctor that I go to and he does steroid injections and I'm okay with that they kind of take a while but I'm okay with that so that's the first option that I can do is surgery and if the keloid grows back from the surgery which may happen Happen, they're they're just really annoying like they're very very stubborn in that way and you can go on to doing steroid injections and that's what I do the earlier you go for these injections the better because it's going to reduce the size that it's going to have it's going to reduce the stop it and shrink it and get taken away they inject steroids in a needle in my ear and they put it on my where my keloids are you're gonna have a needle or two needles or three needles and they're going to inject the steroid into your ear now currently it's once a month I go for my keloid injection I go to a hospital. I go to the fracture clinic part of the hospital and that's where the cosmetic surgeon works on the day that he tells me to come in. I know for treatment, the doctor always told me like buy keloid earrings, but I tried searching up the keloid earrings. There's barely anybody that sells keloid earrings. And the keloid earrings that the doctor may recommend is supposed to put pressure on it so it can prevent the keloid from growing back and forming. He keeps on cussing me and yelling at me, telling me to go get the earrings because the cl other clients that he had, they bought the earrings and it really helps in reducing the size of the keloid. There's not really any vendors that sell. Maybe in the future if I do an update video, if people really like this video, I can show exactly 
what he does when he's inserting the needle in my ear. I can get someone to record it. They know me. I've been seeing this doctor since I was 13 and I'm 21 now. So, so I can definitely do that. When I first started doing these treatments when I was younger, they used to hurt hurt a bit not that much but now when they do i don't feel anything in my ear because they're only injecting in the keloid and you can't feel nothing in the keloid and the way the needle is the doctor so say this is the keloid the doctor is legit going like this in your ear with the needle i'm not joking it may look like it hurts but it doesn't it's gonna bleed they're gonna clean your ear so the blood can be minimized and then they're gonna put a band-aid on your ear or they're gonna put a cotton swab material and then they're gonna tape it on they have to use two different needles on my ear because it's two different ears that I have it they call it bilateral steroid injections or something similar like that I can't even remember and I've been doing this forever after they wrap up your ears you're gonna notice a day later that the keloid on your ear is black when you see that it means that there's no oxygen going to the keloid and the reason why the keloid is growing and it's getting firm and there on your ears because blood and oxygen is going to it and the steroids that they inject in your the ears reduces that and prevents that and cuts off the blood flow and oxygen that makes the keloid grow on your ear after you get the injections you can touch your ear and your keloid it in everything you're gonna touch your keloid you're gonna be like oh this is really soft don't be scared it's not gonna be like sore or anything steroid treatment is really painless nothing to be scared about as time goes on when you're going for these appointments for the steroid injections you're gonna notice your your keloid actually getting smaller I noticed my keloid actually got smaller when i first started off when i was younger like around 13 14 15 i think i was going to appointments two times a month on a monday now i currently do it once a month on a monday in the evenings that may be something that you may be doing as well the doctor that i go to is from ontario canada he has two offices in toronto and in oshawa so he is really good he's such a nice guy to get him i actually went through my family doctor and he set up the appointment and links and everything he is a cosmetic surgeon he's just really nice he knows his stuff he's so nice so nice so nice the surgeon that I go to he recommends mostly the steroid injections we live in Canada this keloid treatment for free you know that they're free and it's covered I'm just like so thankful because I go to a lot of appointments because it's a cosmetic issue right like the keloids are ugly they grow they're trying to ruin my life they're trying to ruin my appearance now let's talk about me personally my experience how I felt so I have keloids <laughs> and I have them on my ears so I have one at the front here one at the back here, at the back here, and one at the back here. I received these keloids from piercing my ears for the second holes. I wanted to get second holes. I got these keloids because number one, I didn't know how to clean them and they were getting hurt a lot. I was doing a lot of sports, I was wearing hats, like they were just getting hit a lot. And I think that caused for keloids to form as well. It hurt so bad. And they were pierced by someone who wasn't even a professional. It was just a girl who went to my school that was really into piercings and she was just piercing everybody and I was just like, oh my god, I want my second hold done, let me just get it done by her. She, she did it. I really do regret getting these done unprofessionally when I was like 13 or 14 without my parents' permission. So that's what I get for doing this without my parents' permission and getting it done unprofessionally. If I actually just waited <laughs> when I was older, not at 13 years old to get these piercings, I would have avoided this definitely. So if your parents say no to piercings people, just wait. That was my, that's what I get for not listening. Sad story that I definitely regret. Lied. And since I know that I have keloid skin, I won't get a tattoo at all. And I never really wanted one. I won't get any more piercings because of the type of skin that I have. When I get a cut or anything, I clean it immediately and it heals with any scar or anything. When I first got these keloids, I was around 13, 14. And I noticed a small bump in my ear. And I was like, what is this? Like, what? So I pierced through the bump again to re-pierce because I was just like, okay, what is this in my ear? I want to have second ear holes. And it was so small. Like, it was just a little piercing hole and the keloid grew to be something 3D and big. My parents found out that I got these second ear holes and they were upset. I didn't get in, like, a lot of trouble, but they were just disappointed and upset. And I was like, oh, man. I should have done that. I noticed that the keloids on my ear were growing big. So I was just like, oh my god, I don't like how these look. So when I was 13, 
or 14, one of those. I started going for my injections. I didn't start going for my injections until a year later after having these keloids. A lot of people were starting to ask me like, oh, what is that bump at the back of your ear? What is that bump? And I started getting so insecure. You all don't even know. Like I was so insecure about the bumps at the back of my ear that I was trying every way to try and hide them. Like I would have my hair covering my ears. I would always wear like long hair, but that like people could still see it. I would like walk and then have, <laughs> I would have my like head like tilted to the side here so that people can try not to see the keloid. And I noticed it was getting so big that I was like, I need something done about this. I don't like how these keloids look on my ears. Like, I feel like crying. I feel like crying even just talking about it because my keloid was getting really big. It was really, really itchy. And when I itch it, it would get bigger and bigger. And it would get super hot. The keloid would get super hot and it would start pulsing and it was really weird. That may happen if you have keloids on your ear. You start to notice that it starts getting hot and itching. I don't experience any of these symptoms anymore. Ever since getting the steroid injections, steroid injections really do work. I was so insecure. I was trying to hide them and stuff, and everyone's like, oh, what is that at the back of your ear? I was like, oh, it's just a bump. Yeah, it's just a bump. I'm going to get rid of it soon. And I was so young, and I was so insecure about it. But I'm really looking back at it, and I had a, a lot of nice friends, and my family is really nice. No one ever made fun of me and my family about it. We just, it was just like, oh, what is that bump in the back of your ear? A lot of my friends and stuff would ask that only once and then I would tell them and then I never got that question again like they never asked me they never cared it was just like it was never there but it was something that I noticed that was there all the time people never really made it like ew ew look at that what is that at the back of your ear blah, blah, blah. no people never did out any of that especially like my friends and stuff they were really nice about it family super nice they're just like a one-time thing people would ask one time and then that would be it they'd be like oh okay Whatever. A lot of people don't even ask. I can see them looking at it while they're talking to me. Yeah, so I've been doing these injections for years. So imagine from 13 all the way till 21. Time flies, number one, I can say that. And I've been just doing it for that long. The thing is, I would do it from like the injections from September all the way to June. And then I would go to Jamaica till September again. So I would have like a break. And by the time it reached June, I still needed a lot more treatment. My killer was still big, but I went to Jamaica so I couldn't do the treatments anymore. So they would kind of grow a little bit in the summer because they would itch and stuff. So then I would have to resume back once I came back into the country. So it took years to do it. And currently they are the smallest that they ever been in all my life. And I'm still gonna go on for injections for this side. This side, I'm okay with the sizes on this side. This side, I'm gonna go for more injections. Again, smaller and smaller and smaller, and then I'll be okay. So one year, I forget what, what year it was. I was in Jamaica for the summer, and my mom told me there's an old method where you tie thread around whatever you want on your body, and it will remove it. So I tied the thread around, around my keloid. And every single day, you would have to tighten the thread on your keloid. Let me tell you, I do not recommend anybody doing it. It took me three and a half months to get the keloid off of my ear through the thread method. So I don't recommend anybody doing the thread method for keloids because number one, it's the most painful thing I ever experienced in whole entire life. The reason why is because you have to tie the thread on your ear very tight, like the tightest that you can. So that number one, that's very painful because the aftermath of tying hurts so bad. It's almost, it's so painful. And then every day on top of that, you have to tighten it even more just to make it smaller and to get rid of it. And then when you keep on tightening it, the keloid is losing oxygen and blood to the keloid and that will stop it from growing and then it will end up dying and then falling off your ear. And that's what ended up happening to me. It was so painful, I would cry. When I was doing the thread method, the keloid was the biggest that's ever been in my whole entire years of having a keloid. When the keloid fell off of the back of this ear due to the thread method, I actually looked at the keloid, the inside that I was telling you all, and it looked like a muscle, like a white muscle. I was poking at it, I was like, this is really hard. After that thread experience, and I would see thread after that, I would cringe. And I would just think back of how painful it was, and how much I cried, and how much I just didn't like 
the bumps on my ear. There's no like at home remedies that you can do to besides the thread method, which I don't recommend. You're gonna have to go to professional to get this removed and reduced. So go to your family doctor. They can help you get a link to a cosmetic surgeon that can actually help you. Yeah, I hope you all found this video helpful. I know this is really a sensitive and personal topic. I'm sorry for the photos. Yeah, so I hope you all found this video useful. If you did, make sure to let me know. Give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. But here's some more videos if you want to watch.